is one. Welcome to Ear for Fear. This is Donovan, and this is the podcast where we talk about scary movies or movies trying to be scary. Hey, and I'm Rick, and uh, today Donovan and I are going to be talking about uh, 1986's April Fool's Day. This is going to be for our, I guess, April Fool's episode. I don't know, right? Mm -hmm. uh, before you and I uh, talk about this uh this lovely 80s flick, uh, let's uh, do a quick uh, synopsis. Uh, nine college students staying at a friend's remote island mansion begin to fall victim to an unseen murderer over the April Fool's Day weekend. All right, man. So, uh, April Fool's Day. Um, uh, this is, I remember when this came out. Um, I would have been a young buck of maybe what, 14, I think, when this came out. Saw it at the theater, liked it. Um, this one's a, this one's a little different for us to talk about because it's classified as a horror movie and we're going to have to like spoil it immediately, right? I mean, cause, the way we talk about this, I mean, if no one's seen this, they should probably, you know, and if they're interested in seeing it, probably stop the episode, go see it, and then come back and listen to us. Because this one is... Yeah, for anyone who hasn't listened to us before, we're a pretty spoiler Latin podcast. So, um, general recommendations for me would be no, I guess. I didn't I didn't come into the podcast expecting to have such a binary answer, but it was just whatever for me. I'm not a huge fan of April Fool's Day. Um, would you recommend this movie? Oh, well, of course I would. I yeah, mean, this is okay. right around. I mean, this is look, I'm a I'm a huge fan of 80s horror. This is almost right dab in the middle of the 80s and 86. I would argue that, I don't know, maybe another year or so. And then the horror movie started to get kind of eh. Um, okay. but, uh, this, I, I would absolutely recommend this movie cause I really like this movie. Um, even though, you know, the ending is, uh, man, it, I mean, can we just spoil it? I mean, I, I don't, I don't know how else to talk about this one cause it's a little different than our right. normal. Right. So that's a no from me, a yes from you. So there you guys go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's, try, let's talk about the full movie. Um, uh, the movie itself um, is a joke. So, you know, well, you know, like, um, how do I describe this? None of the kills are actually kills. The entire movie's premise is, you know, she is not actually killing her friends. And the friends then go in on the joke as they're being killed. Yeah. To then keep the joke going for the people who are, you know, quote unquote, still alive yeah kind of like right. the, yeah like the almost like your typical let's say let's call it like a typical i don't know slasher movie and you got like a final girl this is the only difference here is you kind of got a you know you got you got the couple uh i think it's rob and kit and uh people would remember rob i think rob was in summer school in the 80s and kit was the final girl in friday the 13th part two um so as and what's what's funny, man, is when I first saw this movie, like I didn't think much of it. Like, oh, okay, they're just not showing the kills. Like, okay, maybe it's like a maybe this is a PG thirteen or something, you know? Because typically the slashers of the eighties were R's or, you know, or or even worse, you know. And I don't know. At the time I was watching it, um, like I said, I'm always I always feel I'm pretty darn good at figuring stuff out. And when I saw this in the eighties, I, I I had no idea. I just assume, okay, yeah, you know, people are dying and it's so, it's her, or it's Muffy or it's Buffy or whoever it's supposed to be. And, you know, and 
I, I, you know, and then at the end, I'm like, what the hell's going on here? You know? Well, you can't know what a movie's doing until they tell you, um, just through the way, uh, you know, like evidence works. Right. So this movie leads you down a path to maybe make you think that it isn't going to do the obvious thing. And then it does the obvious thing. And that was that the whole movie is a joke. And I didn't, I was hoping it wasn't going to do that. And then it did that. And then uh, it just felt like a waste of my time. And the reason I say a waste of my time is because the stakes for Muffy is that she can potentially lose her, this giant house if she can't afford to take care of it. But that's almost like a, it's very quick exposition. It's only done through a few lines and like one scene, like a few scenes into the movie. And if you don't remember that, then you don't remember why she would do this when it's revealed at the end, even well, I guess she does explain it again, but you know, you'd be very easily distracted by like, Oh yeah. Ha ha. You got me. Yeah. So <clears throat> now if there was more to that than her, if if there were, if the movie like made the case for me to care about her losing the house, then I would have been on board with what, 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 what happened in the movie, but because it doesn't do that, you know, it doesn't spend us, we don't spend enough time with Muffy, um, to, to, to really care about whether or not she keeps the house yeah, and whether her plan works or not. So I don't care. And so it makes the re- the reveal at the end fall flat for me. Do you feel like, I mean, it just, to me, I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying. Like, there's not a lot of character development with Muffy. And and do you think it's simply this is supposed to be kind of like a, you know, a slasher. So let's knock this thing out in an hour and a half. And we don't have a lot of time to, you know, we don't have the luxury of, you know, giving you this big backstory of Muffy. You know, maybe it could have been simply a scene with her talking to to someone on the phone about possibly losing the house and, you know, something like that. I mean, you know, it could have been a quick scene, right? Maybe a minute, you know? The movie does do, 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 does the legwork, right? It establishes, you know, the premise of the movie in secret. Um, in the opening scene, we get Muffy saying it's going to be, a, you know, like a party they'll never forget. We get the exposition of her saying that, you know, she's going to inherit the house, but that she can't afford it. Um, so the, the movie establishes the foundation, but that's, you know, and that's all well and good. Um, but it doesn't do enough to make us care about the whole premise of the film. And because it, that's the way this film operates, it's, it makes it so that they're just explaining the premise of the movie. So people like me don't don't nitpick it or whatever. It it justifies the events of the movie, even though it presents them in a way that makes us not care about really anything yeah. that's going on, um, unless you care about the characters um, themselves, quote unquote, dying. And I think you should like uh, the character Biff plays. Oh, um, uh, Arch. Yeah, Arch. Um, you know, it's easy to like him. He's a likable guy. Uh, uh, he is. Some of the other ones, not so much. Um, some, some of them, yeah, like the Harvey, kind of like I'm this, you know, kind of rich, whatever. You yeah, know, the Harvey the, guy. The, the trust I, fund baby. Yeah, the trust fund. like a huge, like like a nice job lined up. Um, then you've got like the doctor, boy, the would-be doctor boyfriend. Rob, right? yeah. You know? Yeah, Rob is likable. Kid is likable as a couple. I mean, um, you know, Nikki is, you know, I, I don't know, you know, uh, uh, Skip. Uh, Skip is 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 supposed to be her cousin, but it's really ends up being her twin, well, her twin brother. Um, we find that out later on in the movie. Um, and then Chaz, Chaz, and I think Chaz and Nikki are like a thing. Um, and it was funny that you brought that up because when we were watching this, you made a reference to, uh, and you hadn't even seen Real Genius, had you? No. Yeah, I mean, so Chaz's character. So this movie came out in '86. You you turned to me and said, "What is he trying to be, Val Kilmer?" Which was funny because it, I never really got that, you know, until you said it. I'm like, "Oh my god, it's totally." And and Real Genius would have been out a year earlier in '85, but he totally acted like Val Kilmer's character in Real Genius. Um, yeah, I think in the '80s, especially, this character kind of got pretty big. 
like the cocky, jokey, sarcastic, doesn't take anything too seriously, kind of film buffy character. Yeah. Or not necessarily film, but well, I think film yeah. was what he was used most often. But like the media, the consumer, like culture consumer character, right? Who just has like a pop culture reference for everything or just knows a lot about like 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 pop culture art you know and that's usually movies or tv or music videos sure. or just music in general and yeah that's even though i haven't seen that movie i know that val kilmer was pretty famous for that type of character specifically yes. for that movie yeah but he also kind of like plays that you know when he was popular in the 80s he kind of plays that character quite a bit um so yeah I, this just felt like a ripoff of that type of character but it's a horror movie. There's always going to be tropey characters and you're going to throw in a popular tropey character in the movie of that time, you know? True. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of like how Kevin in the woods just throws all those caricatures, you know, you got like the jock, the stoner, uh, the cheerleader, you know, all those people. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it's there, you know, it's, it's whatever, but yeah, that is what it reminded me of. And the reason I even said anything is because like, yeah, this isn't funny. <laughs> So it's like if the movie's not doing a good job of it, then it's it just starts to bother me. Yeah, and uh, like, yeah, I I knew going into this movie I probably wouldn't like it, and you know I ended up not liking it too much. But there is plenty of things that I like about it, and honestly, the premise alone is kind of worth a buy for me. I do think I like the premise. I like how hard it commits to it. And it's a movie that doesn't take itself seriously at all, especially with like the montage of where it's like going through um, all the characters and us seeing how they're being pranked, like in their rooms or whatever. Yeah. You know, um, like that was cool, even though it, it also kind of felt like a time waster. But it's not if you just kind of look at this movie and look at the whole thing as a joke, almost kind of like as like a meta joke, like it's even wasting your time with it's not only is like the purpose of all these jokey things happening to these characters in line with the movie, but it's also in line with like the quote unquote, like wastefulness of this like movie as a horror movie, you know, Yeah. because it's just like, it's just throwing its premise in your face and it doesn't quit ever. Yeah. You know, like it has a lot of balls to do something like that. And it does a good job with that. It's, but yeah, it's for me, like, you know, like I said, I, I saw it in 86 and I've seen it several times since not, I, I don't want to say several, like in 10 or 20, I've seen it probably, okay. I'd say a handful of times over the years and, and I've always liked the movie, but the reason I never revisited as much as I would say some of my other favorite movies or horror movies is because I know it's not real. I know what the, it's a surprise ending. I already know what the surprise ending is. And it's not even like these kills aren't even kills. Like, you know, in a, in a typical horror movie, let's say, um, I, I don't know. Let's just say my bloody Valentine, for instance, you know, we get the reveal at the end, but we get actual kills. And so, you know, it's fine that I know who the killer is while I'm watching the movie. Cause I've seen it. But, but, you know, in this one, there's, there's no real kills. There's nothing here. And so it's like, yeah, it's just, it's just, a, it's kind of a, oh, ha, we, we got you. It's a joke, you know? And then the fact that all of these things have to line up, look, we know all those things would not have lined up. If that was real, Muffy would have gotten hurt or someone would have done something to her. Cause you know, when people are, um, you know, subjected or or confronted with some sort of violence or something, do they react a certain way? I mean, it's a movie, so of course it 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 worked out the way it was supposed to. You know, like at the beginning of the movie where she opened up, you know, she opened up that window down in the down in the basement, and then that window is used later on in the movie. That's the only way they can get in the house. It's just convenience, you know. It's like no way it really worked, you know. But come on, man, it wouldn't really work that way for the for the sake of the movie. It did. But well, yeah, I'm um, to your point. Uh, if I was designing this, I would literally throw a thousand clues just because I knew like 900 of them or 999 of them would not be seen, you know? So I almost kind of like didn't really mind that too much. There are like some things that kind of bothered me, um, but I don't remember what they are. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, specifically to your point, you know, like, yeah. There's just too much coincidences and it would all like the timeline is also pretty funky because you'd have on some of them, you'd have to like add makeup or something to their, their stuff. 
like that guy at the very beginning of the movie who we think gets injured. Yeah. Like he had to like paste a whole. So, okay. Yeah. I was thinking about that actually. I remember. So that whole sequence at, be- at the starts. Be- at yeah. The, yeah. The very on beginning the boat. with the ferry. Yeah. Yeah. Starts because they fool around and one of them goes, in, you know, uh, in the water from like a fake injury. And then a bunch of the guys go in to, you know, get him out of the water, including the fair, one of the ferry guys. And that fairy guy then stays in the water and it's already been established now earlier in the movie, which is just a couple minutes ago that he has trouble, you know, anchoring the, the ferry onto the pier with the rope. Yeah. And so, you know, flash forward a few minutes, he's trying to do that in the water, but just fails to do it. And then the boat runs into him and then he has the eye injury. So we're getting all this like weird setup that would be totally normal in a, in a movie. That's all like, like okay foreshadowing but the characters aren't going to notice any of this and why would he get in the water if it wasn't for them who are acting independently of him that are aren't on the skit at all so yeah. you're telling like how would he have gotten injured had he not jumped in the water to save him and then yeah. decided to stay in the water i hope that all makes sense but the logic doesn't quite track for him to have been prepared for that yeah so why else so if he had this eye makeup somewhere on his person what was the what was it going to be for if not for that very specific incident with his face getting crushed by like the fairy and the pier? Like that was one instance where it's like, well, now we're just like grasping pretty hard for like the setup, and it just didn't yeah. doesn't make a whole lot of it's just too perfect, you know? Exactly, um, everything has to just fit just right. I mean, yeah, let's say let's say Skip and Arch weren't screwing around. And they didn't play a joke. Yeah. How was he going to just, oh, I tripped and fell in the water, but I'm already here. So let me just do it. Was that his way or, or something else going to happen? You know, I like, don't know. like how was all of that supposed to just, it, it just was so convenient. Everything just fit into place after, I mean, it was just, you know, it was perfect. And we know that's not going to happen in, in a movie, in a sake of a movie, it did. It will, but not in real life. And again, this isn't real life, but it just, it was too. It was like I said, it was too friggin' perfect. Like everything, you know, there was no, there was no like plan of who was going to, who was going to essentially kind of die, you know, and in what order. And it was just kind of the way it went. And then each person who, who died, okay, now they were part of this, you know, and, but yeah, man, I mean, the fake, you know, the fake heads and, the, you know, the all these, all these things, it was, you know, it was. It just wouldn't happen, man. I mean, you know, now with that said, I, I, it's entertaining. It's an entertaining movie for me. I'm entertained when I watch this. Uh, you know, I don't, you know, a lot of these actors I remember from the eighties. So I guess, you know, you wouldn't know most of them other than say, you know, Thomas F. Wilson, and he plays Biff in the back to the future movies. Other than that, I don't know if you would remember any of these people, you know, Muffy did a few movies in the eighties, Valley girl, real, she was in real genius. Chaz was in a movie called Just One of the Guys. Like I said, Kit, who's played uh, the actress is Amy Still. She was the final girl in, in Friday the 13th Part Two. But some of the other ones, they did other stuff. But you know, you know, this is more of like because I I, I watched a ton of movies in the 80s because I'm an 80s guy. I would remember them, and so you know, I don't know. Maybe it holds more of a uh, I don't know. Kind of holds this special place for me or something, you know, especially since I went to the theater and paid to watch this thing, you know? So, but yeah, I mean, you know, is it, is it the greatest? No, it's not the greatest movie. And it's hard for us to sit here because we're calling it a horror movie, but it's really not because no one really dies. You that's, know? that's not fair. I'm sure there are plenty of horror movies where no one dies, but you know, I was thinking about, <clears throat> I was thinking about that earlier today. No one does die. And I was wondering how many horror movies do do that. Um, but I don't think a horror movie needs death to be a horror movie at all. You true, just- true. Yeah. No, you're right in that aspect. I, I think if we're classifying this, let's say we were to throw this in the in the mix of slashers, then well, then the slasher, you there has to be there has to be death. I think um, this movie is making the argument that you don't even need that. You don't, you don't even need deaths in a slasher movie because, yeah, it wouldn't. This isn't a horror movie at all. Um, the, the, so the next thing in that sort of genre is slasher, which I think this movie is trying to be right. Yeah. That's the whole, I mean, this is the eighties. Of course it's going to be a slasher. 
It even has all the kids at the perfect setting. Perfect setting. With, you Absolutely. Know, the perfect yeah. character to do the killing for them, or at least to be, you know, a uh, straw dog or whatever, to think it's her or whatever. Right. So, you know, it's, it's all there, but uh, we don't actually see anyone die and no one no. does die. Um, they so, do, they do have a right, you know, but the, that's, that's my point is that the movie is pretending to be something that's not, and it does trick you into do you, doing that. Do you feel it does a good job at pretending, you know, do you feel like, yeah, they, I felt, uh, it, it just seemed like a normal slasher to me when I was watching it. Right. It had, it had that, that, that feel that eighties slasher feel Maybe you know, of course it was, this more 86 mid eighties, but it had that feel it had. It felt like, you know, um, it felt like a slasher. It felt like an 80s horror movie. It had the, all, the, all, these, all these teenagers or, well, I don't know. They're not teenagers. They're probably early 20s. Um, no, they're, they're soon to be college grads. So they're all oh, probably around mid-20s 20, 20, mid maybe or no. I would say they're all about 22. 22. Okay. So, so and, and, then the, and then the fact that it's on this kind of like this island, right? I mean, there's nowhere to go. I mean, you're kind of, if there is a killer loose, you're kind of screwed. I mean, where do you go? I love, I love the feel of it. I love the, um, the, the, the music is great in this. Uh, we were talking a little bit about that. It, 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 it definitely had that, you know, that eighties, uh, feel or sound, but the, the feel of it, like just the scenery, just, you know, the, the house was, was really cool. The, you know, the water surrounding it, just that whole, it, it captured what it was trying to do or be. I felt it captured that, you know, as a whole, um, whether you like the movie or not. Okay. You know, you kind of got duped at the end, but you kind of knew that was going to happen. Right. I mean, I, when we were watching it, you were like, oh man, I hope they're not going to be doing this whole, like a twin, twin sister or something like that. And then of course that's, that's what they were trying to make you believe you know there was like some twin sister what was it like buffy or muff i think it was buffy because because our main character or one of our main characters is muffy and it was supposed to be her you know twin sister buffy and so you know at what point though did you like this is what i want to know like you said you like some stuff with this and you didn't like some stuff with this did you at what point in the movie did you realize this was a joke. Like, was it when Kit and Rob walked into that room and everyone's standing there? Is that, or did you know prior to that? Like you had a, you had a, you know, like you're like, um, maybe, no, maybe. Dude, I've, I've made this argument a million times before. You can't know something until it's actually shown to you, especially in a movie. They can foreshadow everything that, you know, Yeah. but you don't know until it's actually revealed. So I don't actually know something until it's on the screen. So I didn't know that I was doing that joke until it, you know, we saw them all alive. Yeah. You can't know. Like you, like obviously the very first thing before I even saw this movie was, is the whole movie going to be a joke? And then I get 80 minutes into the movie and it doesn't appear to be that way. And in the last five minutes, it's like, oh yeah, it is a joke. Ha you were right the first time. We just tricked you into thinking it couldn't be. Yeah. You know, and it gives you a misdirect with the whole twin sister thing. Or, you know, you think one sister replaced the other and they're trying to like fool them. So, and, and, and do, in doing that, it's also fooling you, but it's not really fooling you because it's just appearing to be something that you thought it could be and is making the argument that it isn't. And that's why it, it makes me mad. I wouldn't be mad if I cared about the stakes for Muffy. Okay. Um, but because I don't, then the entire thing has been a joke at my expense, my expense being my time. And I think people listening to this know that, hey, we also do a podcast for these movies. So it's not just the 90 minutes that I'm spending. It's also <laughs> the 90 minutes in this podcast, <laughs> along with all the time I think about the movie yeah. um, in between. Yeah, I got to so, I got to Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't interrupt you. I got to tell this one story. But go ahead. So it's like, yeah, I'm going to be mad when I already knew what the movie was going to do. It then tries to say that it's not going to do that. And then it does that. That's the ultimate joke, right? Yeah. The entire movie is a joke and it's a, a joke at your expense. It's, it, 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 I don't know. I, I actually, I should have thought of this before I did the episode, but I should have watched the trailer to this movie to see how it advertised itself. Yeah. Which I'm sure is, so it, just, it, did, it, it did itself as like a slot. Sorry. It did itself as a slasher movie. It, it did. Yeah. Yeah. So it's even advertising. It's been, 
advertising dollars to trick you again. So it's, they don't like it, you know? <laughs> and, and the only fix you had to do to make me like it is to make me care about Muffy and her keeping the so, house. So, as, so if they would have established that you would have liked this more. Like if I had a scene that established that I cared about Muffy and I do think she's kind of a cool character. I do. I do. But yeah. we just don't see enough of her to really no. you know care about her and make me care and uh, establish the stakes of her like scene stakes of her losing the house and what that means to her in in a scene that could be like well what is the scene because we already get a scene like that with the birthday party you know when we see it as a her, her as a kid as a kid yeah um then you know that's all you kind of need N- the movie just kind of does the bare minimum it does the the legwork to justify its ending um but th- otherwise the movie is a 90 minute joke to yeah. waste your time you know it's like you sitting on a whoopee cushion everyone knows the fart isn't real but it embarrasses you. So this whole movie is just one giant whoopee cushion prolonged for 80, 90 odd minutes. Yeah. You know, I, I see. So that. now if you can somehow divorce yourself from that, uh, somehow appreciate the characters and the setting and uh, the, the quote unquote kills, then sure you have a fine movie, um, but you kind of have to get over what I I'm, I'm, apparently unable to get over yeah i i think i think there's going to be you know i think there's going to be people like me who are perfectly fine with it and then there's going to be some individuals like you that feel the same way i mean it's you know i I don't think your uh opinion or reaction is you know outrageous i mean you know um i i think i i you know look like even if i'd never seen this i would have looked at it through different lens you know um, but I, yeah, I mean, I, I get it, man. I mean, I, I understand. I, I think they simply could have taken a one minute scene and her on a telephone and, you know, something, some dialogue as to, you know, I may lose this or this or that to me, this is what I did understand. And maybe you can, you can clear this up for me. Look, we know she has money. Her family has money. I mean, she's going to inherit this is let's say her, her parents deceased or she just inherits it at a certain age, which let's call it 21, you know, cause I know there's a lot of stuff that's built into trusts or, you know, whatever you turn 21 and that's when you get your money Are the parents still alive. And this is just going to be her, you know, this is going to be her inheritance at, at 21 or were they, you know, did they pass away? And then, you know, if that's the case, well, you know, I understand her, her doing this because she needs some sort of income coming in. But if her parents are still alive, I mean, I'm sure they got plenty of money. Why, why would she have to do this? It's just, you know, it, was it part of the trust? You know, hey, you know, look, you get this, but you're going to have to pay for all of these things. You know, we're giving you this property, but in order for, you know, you to maintain it, you're going to have to come up with some sort of income. You know, I, I, I don't reckon, I don't understand how this, this works. If it's going to try to work the way she did it with them, it seems like a huge liability nightmare. Oh my like, God. Yeah. Like, like anyone can get hurt at any time, you know, um, like there's just no legal way you can get away with doing that. With, with her friends, this was an experimental weekend. She just wanted to see if it would work. Now, if you know, it obviously, it worked pretty well for her. So the idea is, you know, from now on, when people come to the island and to her home, they know to expect something. So I'm sure there's waivers and all this other stuff that, you know, she probably protects herself. But with her friends, if none of the well, eight of them knew, I mean, this could have gone horribly wrong. Uh, didn't Harvey have a gun? Yeah. He had a gun. I mean, that easily, could, you know, so, yeah, I mean. It, it would look, man. It, we we know it's just it was is too damn perfect. It wouldn't have happened this way. But you know, for the sake of the movie, and you know, it's it's a fun movie. It's a fun movie. You know, um, you know they do some good things, and I, you know, I didn't really have a lot of. I, if I had any issues with it, it just would have been some of the dialogue was just bad. You know, um, I can't remember some of it offhand, but a lot of the stuff was with the Harvey guy. He was that what trust the trust fund, you know, some of the stuff he said just was 
I don't know. It kind of irritated me. Um, but other than that, I mean, nothing, you know, I enjoyed it. I joined the, I enjoy the eighties feel. I enjoy the music. I enjoy the feel of, I love the whole Island feel, you know, um, the, the fact that you're, you know, if, like I said, if there is a killer, there's nowhere for you to go. There's no boats. Um, because earlier in the movie, I think I forget who that was, the sheriff or whoever that was took their boat. So there's no way to, to get off this Island. You're not swimming. Uh, you're not swimming back to wherever the mainland that's not happening. So you're now, you know, stuck on this, on this Island with the killer. And, and the thing is too, it could be any of them, you know, it's almost like a, a mystery, like a clue. It's like, well, who is it? Who did it? You know, it could be any of us and they're amongst us right now. Right. But the movie teases you with all that. And then it just says, nope. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it does. I mean, it, and it, but it does a good job in the sense of really. So, 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 you know, a Muffy's idea is to push that, you know, uh, she has a twin and, and the twin has basically come, come to the Island and killed her and, and replaced her. And that's why she's constantly acting weirder and weirder. So she does a good job of that. She really sells that and everything has to work just right. You know, it's like going to the basement and you see the little, um, those little, uh, figures, you know, and all of them are, are, you know, are sitting up against the wall and there's like a little pool. And then that's supposed to represent the three that they found in the well. And it's, so they do a good job of those things, but it's just too convenient. Everything's just too convenient. Like absolutely perfect, man. You know, and in real life, it just wouldn't happen. So, you know, but I mean, was there other, you know, was there certain things? I mean, you said there were some things that bothered you, but you couldn't remember. Was there some things that you really enjoyed? Like, Hey, that's kind of clever or, you know, if I'm being honest, talking about this is just kind of making me more mad, <laughs> more, mad <laughs> than awesome. I, more mad than I was when I was watching the movie. Um, and I just can't get over the fact that the movie was a waste of my time. Like I can't get over the fact that the movie was a huge waste. Okay, of time. so minus <laughs> minus the fact that it made you mad. Yeah. Did did you were you entertained when you were watching it? Like, was um, it entertaining? I'm trying to remember what was entertaining about it. I mean, I, sure. I mean, as far as any other slasher movie goes, I guess as long, because it's not. You know, like horror is a little bit like comedy. If you know how to design a, a, a scene that it becomes tense and has, you know, that release, then, you know, you, you have at, at the very least an OK movie with some OK scenes, not like Howard Hawks level type of thing. But, you know, you, you, you've got something OK. This movie does those things OK. You know, that's why it's so su successful and tricking you is because those kills, even though you don't actually see the kills, do have that buildup. You know, that's, yeah. it's fine. And the movie's even occasionally very beautiful. Um, as you were talking about earlier, whenever we got like scenes of the water, it looked quite nice. Yeah. And obviously that island was very pretty. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like I, I just can't right now think anything beyond, you know, what I mentioned earlier. Yeah. And just, you just, you feel mad. You feel mad because you got kind of, you got to kind of do this. would be here, a right? very like, good, like 30 minute episode. Uh, like a really, really short episode of like a Black Mirror episode or something yeah. or a Twilight Zone, you know, like, oh, everything was actually fake. Yeah. All right. You got me. <laughs> and the thing that I think that really sells it and really makes me angry is the uh, the 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 woman um, who had the abortion for real. Oh, what was her name? Was it Nan? 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 Yeah, it was Nan. Nan. Yeah, Nan. Because I, I was curious, why are they calling her Nan? She's not like a grandma or whatever. Yeah. Um. So. She had an abortion and that was a clue for her in the room and that really upset her. Yeah. And then at the very end of the movie, after it's been revealed that everything's been fake, we get a scene of, um, just, uh, M Muffy, Muffy yeah. in her room playing with the Jack in the box again. And it's, I don't know if it comes out or not. It doesn't matter. But the point is the movie does a slow build up again and again after yeah. the reveal. So you're like, okay, is anything going to happen for real this time? Or is it going to be a joke? Or is it going to cut to black or something? And then, you know, something does happen for real. Nan comes out, has like a knife and like slits her throat. And there's like blood everywhere. Except, oh, nope, no, it's a joke again. Yeah. And Nan winks at the camera. 
Yeah. And that's what I think that's like the punctuation mark for this whole movie that kind of just puts me over the edge. Like just cut to black, yeah. make it so that this whole thing actually has some sort of character meaning for Muffy. You know, when it comes to like maybe her dead mom who gave her the Jack in the box as a Christmas or as a birthday present. Yeah. You know, instead you, you, you acknowledge the camera with your character as if they know it's a movie now. And now I hate this movie even more, you know, or you could have just committed to the kill. She was very angry at the abortion. She probably didn't like going through this emotional distress in the yeah. same way I am. So just kill her for real. And then the movie doesn't do that. So there's like a few different things all happening in this one little scene yeah. that just kind of like wraps everything up for me in like a nice little bow <laughs> for what I didn't like about the movie. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Let's say, let's say they went that route. Would that have made it better for you? Like, yes, let's say 100%. Yeah. Don't even have to finish the question, Dad. Okay. It would have made it 100 times better. Okay. Because then there would actually have been some sort of stakes. Now, all this thing that she had worked for, it's gone. It's gone. You know, the 90 minutes that we had spent is gone yeah like but in like a way that's at least impactful yeah because i mean muffy took took a lot of the stuff too far you know she even said that at the at the very end of the reveal look i took some of these things too far you know and she definitely did with nan and so and and there seemed to be like some more some underlining stuff with them that was never discussed so it could have it could have been where she did kill her at the end and we get an ending I, I would have liked that a lot more, but yeah, we just kind of got to do, we got duped again. Like, Oh, cause it looked good. It looked like a damn good kill. Like a, like a, like a very typical, you know, my neck's getting slashed, you know, especially in an 80 slasher look well, great. And then it just was like a fake prop, you know? And then it's just, yeah. Like the wink at the, you know, cause I love that buildup, you know, Muffy's, you know, after they celebrated all evening with drinking champagne, she goes to her room. She's a little tipsy. And yeah, there's the jack in a box. And she's slowly doing it. And then she puts it down. And then she's slowly doing it. And she puts it down. And it's that anticipation. And as soon as it pops up, and it does pop up, by the way, as soon as it pops up is when we get that. That would have been cool. I would have dug that, you know. Yeah, the movie doesn't do that, though. And it, it sh- should have done something um, instead of doing nothing. And what's the point of a movie if it doesn't do anything? Um, but it, it does. It, but it does do something. The whole point of this, they're really telling you. Look, I mean, even from from the from the name of the movie, it's April Fool's Day. So we all know we get jokes played on us on April Fool's Day. So they're telling you straight up. You're hoping it's not, at least for your sake, it's not. You know. But they told you what this is. It what this is. They've done it through the whole movie, and then they and they gave you that ending, and then at the very end, they did it to you again. So it's, you know, now yeah. it doesn't mean you have to like it, but, but well, they're consistent to what they're doing. Right. When I'm committing my time. I would certainly hope that I would like it and I didn't like it. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I understand. I, 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 yeah. I mean, you've been very clear that you don't like it. Totally respect that. But I mean, you have to admit they, they, they stuck, they did, they, they planned on one thing and they stuck with that through the whole movie. And they did it to you. They did it to you not once, but twice, you know. And so, I mean, you got to give it some. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm reaching here. But I mean, I already, I already did. I already yeah. gave it credit. I said, uh, you know, I gave it credit for the commitment that it had. Okay. Yeah, but you did. I think you I did. did say that. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't mean I like it. You're right. I don't. Yeah. No. Because I, I, I. Okay. I'm getting older. I'm, I'm nearing thirty. You're almost. You're nearing fifty. Shut. You don't need to age me. <laughs> uh, well, he is. Um, <laughs> and like 90 minutes of my time, that's a non-zero amount of time, dude. You know, I will say, though, if it wasn't for the podcast, I would have never watched this movie. True. So, you know, True. maybe yeah. I have you to blame. Like, uh, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Oh, come on. So man. it wasn't that bad of a movie. It's a it's a good movie. You just didn't like what it did. You can't say like, like, dude, we've watched some movies that are just terrible. You cannot say this is a terrible movie. It just made you mad. It doesn't mean that it wasn't entertaining because it was. It was entertaining. Yeah. Um, it's not like Norbit bad or something. You know, it's it's a watchable movie. But if 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 you're not into what it's doing, and obviously I'm not, then, you know, you feel the way that I feel. Well, I, I, I think and I would be and please, please correct me if I'm wrong, but going from us watching slashers and let's just call this even though we know what's happening let's call it a slasher you don't like slashers 
I I mean, please tell me if I'm wrong, but I can't. We've watched several, and I don't remember you really liking any of them. Like, you like some stuff that they do, but as a whole, you're not a fan of slashers. I so, think I think that the problem, and I'm gonna I'm gonna, sorry for everyone. I know I know what our icon is. I know what our title of our podcast is. I think that the floor for slasher movies and quality is very low. And I think that the ceiling very rarely, or I'm sorry, the, 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 the times that slasher movies hit the ceiling in terms of movie quality is very, very, very low as well. So you have like an average quality of slasher movies as a movie it, it being good does not happen all that often. And I like good movies. I like movies yes. that justify wo- everything that they're doing within the movie. I love it when people put a lot of thought into the things they're making and spending all this time on and all this effort on. Slashers, just through their namesake, only really want to do one thing, usually as a primary goal, and that's a pry, a, a, apply a setting um, to justify to justify a way to 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 get a lot of kills in in their movie and if that's the whole point of your movie that's boring in in my opinion because at that point you're literally just there for a roller coaster and i think there are better ways to get a roller coaster out of a movie than just showing people dying on screen in some sort of way so that's 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 kind of like my generalized opinion on slashers now there are good movies that kind of fit in the genre um that kind of do interesting things like dead alive does a lot of interesting things and is batshit crazy and has a very nasty shit in it. But that doesn't mean that's not a slasher though. But that's it's close enough. Well, I mean, that would be more of a to me, I would think it would fall into the category of say zombie. You know, that would be the subgenre of horror, would be like almost like a zombie movie. But I, I don't think I don't think what you're I don't think what you're saying about slasher is wrong. I and I think if you talk to most people, they would probably agree with you about that. You know, um, there are lots of slashers that I don't care for. Um, some slashers I really do like, but I know I know they're not like they're not like the greatest movies ever. It's just whether I'm, uh, you know, I like the subgenre of that the slasher, and I'm entertained. You know, um, so as long as I'm entertained, you know, um, I'm, I'm okay with it. Now, it doesn't mean they're all great because they're not. There are a lot of bad ones. I mean, a lot, you know, w- you know, when they got became really popular, people were throwing these things out left and right. And they were and there's a lot, a lot of bad ones. And there's there's a handful of really, really good ones. And then there's some. OK, you know, these are these are cool. You know, um, you know, like Halloween. I mean, Halloween is, you know, would be a it's it, Halloween as a whole is a great movie. And it's a slasher. You know, the original Friday the 13th is a really it's a really good movie for what it was. I mean, you know, so there are those out there. And then there's the other kind of I don't know, I would say almost like, you know, you got like your upper echelon of slasher and then you got your kind of, oh, you know, whatever. And then you got the, the bottom of the barrel, you know, um, April Fool's Day is tough because, it, again, this isn't a tra- traditional slasher. Right. I mean, so you can't, you know, but it's following that slasher. Um, I don't know recipe you know um so but i i I can't i'm not saying i can i can argue it's not what you're saying is wrong but it's like you know there's 20 years difference between us you know we grew up watching different stuff and 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 there's there's certain stuff or horror movies or certain types of horror movies or just movies in general that you like and i may not like um and that's okay you know what i mean and 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 people that are listening to us right now i mean you know, they may, they may go, Donovan, you're, you're freaking crazy, you know, or they may be right on, you know? So, so I, I can't, I can't dispute it, but there's plenty that I like, you know? And so it's just, I think maybe too, if maybe if you were, if you grew up in the height of the slasher, I'm not saying you would have a, you know, different, different opinion of it or a feel or something, but no, no, and, no. And the reason I say no, so like readily, um, is because I grew up with Fast and the Furious. I grew up with like movies like Saw and hostile and like you know the the torture porn i hate those um, i hate those i'll say and, that right off the bat I and i like you know i don't like these movies yeah i mean i to be fair i've only seen the first fast and the furious movies but just because uh, maybe i'm a product of my time but that doesn't necessarily mean i'm always going to appreciate every single product of my time 
you know, and that, uh, that applies to slasher movies. I think the fact that like slasher movies are just so like not concerned with like being like a good movie first, they're more concerned with just being entertaining and being able to be talked about to a certain extent, like, Oh, Hey, you remember that scene in blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, sort of like, you know, your water cooler type movie, you know, they're more concerned with that than they are in trying to like push character, plot, theme, whatever, which is what I respond to more. Sure. Um, but it doesn't mean like any sort of movie, regardless of the genre it's operating in, can do those things. But because, like you said earlier, the 80s, they saw these as money makers. They're, of course, yeah. going to, you know, push them out. No one's going to, like, try to put, like, uh, art into a product that's so, like, quickly manufactured to just make a quick buck yeah. at a couple points in the year. So, you know, that's why I said what I said. And I think it's okay for me to think that. And I think it's okay for me to understand that this movie is playing on that idea and for me to still then get, you know, mad because, you know, it's not even doing that, you know? So, yeah, I, I don't know. No, I mean, they did, you know, look, we, we talked about this multiple times on the podcast. They, they, they crank these things out very quick. They, they made money off of these types of movies. There was their way of just look, man, we don't need the greatest actors. <laughs> we, we don't, we need, we need 90 minutes to fill we're going to, you know, we're going to, we're going to get all these teenagers or whatever it is, you know, I don't know, 16 to 20, whatever. We're going to kill them off. We're going to have the, you know, there's going to be nudity because there's always some sort of nudity. You know, they, they always, there was always a, a, a way for them to insert that, you know, whatever it is. I mean, you can just insert it here and it's, and it, it follows those, those tropes throughout those types of movies, man. That was, that was their thing. So, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, man, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and, and disagree and say you're crazy because you're not. It's just you and I like some different things, and that's okay. I mean, that's what's great about this because you and I can sit here and, and you know, kind of talk about it and maybe argue a little bit, and I think it's great, you know. And, um, you know, this movie, <laughs> this movie made you mad. Um, yeah, I, I did think, not think I, I could tell you this when, so what was funny and I was, I was going to say this earlier. What was funny is Don and I were going to do this episode for a while and then stuff just kept, you know, life happens and stuff kept coming up. And then Donovan goes, is this even really a movie or is this like an April fool's joke, which I thought was pretty funny. And I'm like, no, I, you know, I promise you it's a real movie. I wish, I wish it was a joke. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I did not, when I recommended it, it just made sense. You know, it's, it's going to be our, you know, April Fool's episode, you know, and it and you had never seen it. I I thought you might kind of like it, you know, um, I didn't think you would love it. I knew you wouldn't love it, but I did not think it would make you mad. Um, so I think it's kind of it's I mean, I'm not I, I'm not laughing, but I think it's kind of it's kind of funny that it, it it did that to you. You know, it did make you feel something, man. You know, the the motion of anger there. Uh, yeah, it did. It did <laughs> so, that very well. Yeah. No. So, I mean, it, it succeeded a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, 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 I told you the movie's very successful in that regard. You know, um, it's able to elicit a certain reaction. Um, because again, the movie's making its entire existence, a joke at your expense, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, if, at least if you don't enjoy it, if you do enjoy it, then I think you're actually playing a joke on it. Because you're able to derive enjoyment out of this movie when I actually think it's uh, just a 90 minute whoopee cushion. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I kudos to the movie. Yeah, but I mean, like, yeah, I mean, I I was more angry now when as we're talking about it than I was at the end of the movie. Yeah, which is quite funny. That's yeah, pretty funny. Um, but I, I love I, I love it, man. I think it's great. Cool. I, I think it's great, man. I'm it makes it, no. I mean, I'm not. I'm not happy that you got mad. I just. I'm happy that it's it's entertaining. It's this is making for an entertaining episode because I didn't know it. It. We don't. We normally when we watch a movie, we don't talk about it until the episode because I just want to. I just want to. I want to. I don't want to know what you thought of it until we sit down because I just think it's a fresh take and I like it and so. I did not know it made you that upset. Um, yeah. You know. Well, I already had a thoughts on the movie and then, you know, you know, like when you think about something, you don't like really think about it too hard. I don't know. I don't know how to describe this, but you know, now my thoughts are getting like fully fledged as I'm talking to you. And then I'm realizing how like 
mad this movie made me. Yeah. And so that's happening right now. <laughs> um, well, hey, man. I all... do I do hope that we do not revisit this movie, and I hope there's no sequels for us to do next year. No, no, there will no, there was uh, not a sequel to this. Thank I God. I doubt uh how many years ago that was, 1986. Yeah. That's a long time. Was that 35 years? Is that 35 know. years? That's 35 years or 36. I don't know, man. No, they're not doing a sequel to this. Um cool. and and if they did, I don't think I would have you do it with me um, because, you know, I don't want you to get more uh, upset. <laughs> I think it's I think it's kind of funny, though. Um, you know. Oh, cool. Yeah. So um, anyways. OK, so look, you would not recommend it. Um, I would say re- I would recommend it. Um, but I hope that you you started the episode and then turn it off and then watched it because we just completely ruined it for you. So, um, you know, and that'd be kind of a bummer. Like they'd never seen it and they'd listen to it and go, oh, shit. Well, I can tell you that if they watched it with all the spoilers, it would have been the same amount of time wasting as if they didn't see it with spoilers. So yeah, it's all the same. Yeah. Well, well anything else, dude? Uh, I think you uh, you made your, uh, no. <laughs> you made your uh, point very no. clear. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, I introduced the uh, positivity corner on the cleansing hour. Um, I'm not going to do that for this episode. Oh, okay. So. We'll, we'll save it next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cool, man. Um, all right. Well, uh, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, hope no one, uh, hope Donovan didn't piss all you uh, slasher fans off. <laughs> Sorry. Nah, man. No need to apologize, man. I think the horror, the horror community, horror folk understand, man. It's not, it's not for everybody, and it's okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. So, anyways, uh, thanks again for listening, everyone. Uh, take care. Thanks again for listening. Make sure you tell everyone about our Ear for Fear podcast. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Ear for Fear. You can also check out our website, earforfear.com. There you can keep up to date on news, events, and episodes. You can find us wherever you listen to podcasts. We hope you come back and get an earful.